Good morning. That was a weak good morning. Good morning. <laughs> That's a lot better. Thank you. Welcome to Riverline. We thank you for joining us for worship this morning. If this is your first time visiting, we welcome you with open arms. And if you were work, um, also watching us virtually, we welcome you also. Um, there's a few announcements in your bulletin you need to make sure that you look at, especially there's an insert on the Vacation Bible School. Bible school. Is there any other announcements? Uh, Anita, Anita Stone Street is listed in the bulletin, but she's not able to be here today. Her husband, Greg, had open heart surgery about three weeks ago, and he came home on Tuesday, but they're still adjusting and um, having a little bit of trouble, so please remember them uh, in your prayers. The prelude, uh, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, will still be the same. I'll be doing a piano arrangement, and the postlude will still be the same. For the anthem, we are singing a song called Holy Spirit, Live in Me, and the offertory is called Comfort. It's from Joel Rainey's book called Shepherd Songs, uh, influenced by the first verse of Psalm 23. Is there any other announcements? If not, I'd like to call it a worship. Let us hear what God the Lord will speak, for God will speak peace to his people. Surely salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell among us. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, let us worship God. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, by the power of your spirit, reveal your will to us today through your word. Help us to understand your creative, redemptive, and consoling work, and lead us into the world with your spirit. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts as we listen to the prelude prepared by Pam. <clears throat>
Thank you, Pam. Would you please stand so we can sing the first hymns on page 11 or on the screen above? Come down, thou, 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 of her blessing, of every blessing. <clears throat> Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind, body, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. <clears throat> in your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight on your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Please take a moment, brothers and sisters, to silently confess your sins. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Michelle. Come on down. Oh. Come up here so we can see. Let me put this away so I can think. Okay, guys, you know what we're going to talk about today? We are talking about things that are different, okay? Let me have my cheat sheet that I wrote this morning. Do you know some people don't like magazines, but they like books, and some people like magazines and not books? It's just different. Do you know some people like dogs? And, uh -huh, and some people like cats. Do you know that some people like cats, but not black cats? <laughs> so, do you know some people like chocolate and some people like vanilla? No, just differences. No, this is just I vanilla. Mm -hmm. I prefer vanilla to and chocolate. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you know that God made everything and everything is equal. Okay, there is no right or wrong. So, do you know that a lot of times there are people that like don't like people because they're a little bit different? Like sometimes, like let's say now, especially with the election, Republicans, some people don't like Democrats. Some Democrats don't like Republicans. Some Democrats and Republicans don't like independents. Just crazy that everybody's right. There's like no, no difference. Like I'm different than Charlie. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. Now, there is an amazing musical theoretically coming to the Alban called Honk I Jr. If anybody dress. gets the opportunity. I have you do, okay? Let me talk, okay? Because I got lots to say and then I get confused. But there's well well let me go to this one first. Okay. What's this? A glass. It's a bottle of pops. Kind of old fashioned. Do you know what this is? What? It's a bottle opener. Now look at this. See this bottle opener? You open it like that. And it takes the lid off, right? Now, do you know what? You have to have two hands to use this opener. Do you know what this is? This is a one-handed bottle opener. So if you only have one hand, because there are some people that might be handicapped. And it's not, now look, they have a special unique device, and I'm not super bright because I always have to look at the picture to tell me how to use it. But a friend of mine got this for me because I thought it was so amazing. So you have to use two hands with this one, but watch. If I put this one on, turn so I can see, I put this here and this here like this, I can pick this up with this hand, I can put this right here like this, now watch. I don't need two hands because some people can't do it. So this is a different bottle opener. Now, you may pick it up and you go, I don't understand. It doesn't work right. There's no way I can do it. I don't know how to use it. But just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just a different way to do it. But in Honk, there's a song. Now, if you see this, this is, Honk is about the ugly duckling, okay? Here's the ugly duckling. In one part, they, he wants to say quack so bad, but he can't. He's not a duck. So he's like, honk. He honks, right? Well, he has a song, and that's what I'm going to read you the words of his song, okay? His song goes, he said, if, oh, if it goes away, if I knew, if they knew just how dearly I would love to honk, but it's true. I'm just a bird who seems to lack the knack. I'm just different. I'm just different from the rest, and who can blame them for wanting me to find another nest? But different isn't naughty, different isn't bad, so why should being different make me sad? I'm just different. They're like peas from the same pod. No wonder they make fun of me. Life's harder when you're odd. But different isn't scary, different is no threat, and though I'm still their brother, they forget. I, I didn't... I didn't choose to, to look this way. I didn't want to be unique. I don't like these grubby feathers, and I hate my stubby beak. There, I, let's listen. There's a runt in every litter, one black sheep in every flock. But when you know 
it's you somehow your ego takes a knock. But I hurt the same inside. Different isn't spiteful. Different isn't wrong. So why is it so hard to get along? I only want to get along. Different isn't hateful. Different could be swell. Different is just different. So let's say a real quick prayer, okay? Lord, help us to see everybody as the same. Help us to know that just because somebody's different, lives in a different city, lives in a different state, does things different, goes to a different church, has a different color, skin, has different beliefs, that they're just different. They're not scary. They're not bad. Help us to love everybody the way you love everybody. Amen. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let's put this back. Don't worry, we'll try to do some object lessons with you too. Good morning, Presbyterians. And other friends who may be in attendance. Glad to have you here. This one's entitled, A Layman Looks at the Holy Spirit. And it is entitled that way, I am the layman and I am just an ordinary guy. And that's what I want to, to stress first. When you talk about the Holy Spirit, you think maybe you need someone with three or four degrees, uh, advanced degrees, uh, conferences and studies and workshops, and that's just not me. I'm just ordinary like you, and I've looked at this thing and tried to do some research, and we'll look at scripture and see what we can come up with. What other people have said, some examples. I might throw in some television shows and trivia, but I'll try to limit personal opinion and not get too much on that. The Holy Spirit has kind of bothered me through the years, and now it's too many years that it still kind of bothers me. I've always kind of thought that there's a hierarchy, that there was God, and then the Son came along a little bit later, and then the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, and away we go. Now that is a perfect example of bad theology. That is not true. Do you know where the Holy Spirit first appears in the Bible? The second verse in the Bible. Genesis 1 verse 2 says, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. But what about the Old Testament? There's actually evidence that the Spirit shows up there as well. In Exodus 31, there's a verse, and they're doing some work on the temple. And this reads, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze and cutting jewels for setting and carving wood and to work in all manner of workmanship so he could help with the temple. So there's the old Holy Spirit showing up in Exodus. How about Jesus the Christ? Exodus 3 verse 14 reads, And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Say to the children, I am has sent me to you. And then when we get to the New Testament in John the 8th chapter, Jesus is having a discussion with some of those that aren't exactly in his camp. And Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, 
I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So that's a loop right back to I am in the Old Testament. So it's kind of a circle. And we could actually see the three in one, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one, just like the oil, or just like the three Frankfurt ice cream. You can kind of break it down if you want to. In terms of action, there was God the Creator, Jesus the Redeemer, the sacrifice, and the Holy Spirit is kind of an energizing action thing. It gets things done. It influences people. It's three in one, though, but at other times you'll notice maybe more of a Holy Spirit effect coming along, especially in modern times. Is the Spirit of God like your conscience, that little voice that talks to you? Well, yeah, but it can be a whole lot bolder than just that small voice. When you hear it, it's the voice of God. The Holy Spirit has energy. Does anybody know what holiday falls on March the 14th? Oh, it's not well known, but if you're an engineer or a mathematician, you might recognize Pi Day. Where I work, the engineers celebrate it and they bring in pies to eat that day. Pi is the ratio of a circle circumference to its diameter. And the neat thing is, it never ends. We learned it in school is 3.14. That's two digits out. But you can carry it eight digits out. You can carry it 18 digits out. It goes on and on. Pi never ends. If you want to compliment someone and tell them how much you care about them, just say, I love you times pi. <laughs> it never ends. How about all that that's going on with energy? Here's your object lessons. This is one of those energy shots. I guess some of them are called five-hour energies. I don't know if I've ever used these at all. I think it's more for young people. But then I keep thinking, why do young people need energy? They've got energy. This is energy. I worked with a guy, and he would come into work drinking one of these things on the way across the parking lot. That was his morning pick-me-up, and he was energized. <laughs> now, if you're more of a standard old-timer, your energy might come here. This is just good coffee, but this is Louisiana coffee, and it has some chicory in it. Yeah, it, it'll get you going. I had some the other morning, got all kinds of work done, and didn't even want to work that day. I just had to work. But that, think of energy like that, and that's in the Holy Spirit. It's ready. It's got that potential times pi. It goes on and on. Jesus says believers will not be left alone. He will never leave us or forsake us. He will remain with every believer right to the end. And the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, of our broken relationship with God, and convinces us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit has power and energy. It stays with us. It helps us. We can communicate with others. It educates us. It provides comfort. Well, how or when does the Spirit come to us? 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body. Two things stand out. The baptism with the Spirit is a collective operation of God, and it includes every believer. Billy Graham wrote in his book, and this is one of those things that he says, and I'm just like, whoa. He writes, I have become convinced 
that there is only one baptism with the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer and that it takes place at the moment of conversion. Don't need anything else. If you are a believer, you've got the Spirit. I've been flipping TV on early on Sunday mornings and I find that Highway to Heaven is back on television. There's a channel on 133 called Cozy and I, I think it's like at 6 and 7 o'clock but I get up early. So I, last Sunday I was like, whoa, this looks like Highway to Heaven. And it is. It was. It was on again today. And if you know it or you don't know it, that's okay. I'll explain. There was a character in there played by Michael Landon as an angel and he comes to earth and his name was Jonathan and he had a sidekick that was Victor French and he was Mark Gordon. It ran for five seasons and for your trivia question it's kind of a little morbid but both of those guys died at the age of 54. Victor French died two months before the final episode here. But if you watch it, it's kind of neat in that every now and then the angel, Michael Landon, will use his powers. And he doesn't have a lot of leeway, but if somebody would kind of get rough or he would need to move them out of the way, he can kind of levitate them out of the way and throw them over in some boxes or do whatever he wants. And his sidekick, Victor French, the character, would see that, and he thought that was so cool. Wow, and he called it the stuff. So they'll get in situations, and the sidekick will say to the angel, use your stuff, use that stuff. But he uses it sparingly and in the right time, because it's not a sideshow. We all got the stuff. We all got the Holy Spirit. Sadly, there is some false teaching or misunderstood teaching about the Holy Spirit. Along with the Spirit comes gifts and fruits. Just like at Christmas time, you get gifts and fruits. The Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church lists seven gifts of the Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Billy Graham writes that we all get at least one of those gifts. Other gifts are mentioned in 1 Corinthians, and maybe you're familiar with some of these as gifts, wisdom and knowledge reappear, miracles, prophecy, healings, discerning of spirits, tongues and interpretation of tongues. And then we have the fruits of the Spirit. Paul mentions those. And it reads, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. I have a book at home and it lists 19 gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you're invited to do that on your own, do some research. But the gifts seem to have to do with service. Not everybody gets the same gifts. And in time, the gifts will end. The fruits have to do with character. Every variety of fruit should be visible in all. And they're permanent. So is it gifts or fruits? Or how should we look at that? Some folks get kind of upset trying to figure out what they have and don't have and who's got what. And there's been some church board meetings and committee meetings that have to deal with that. Especially when it comes to the, the tongue thing. At one time that was a lot of problems for small churches. I kind of come from a small church, rural church background. And if you've got 20 or 30 people coming, that's fine. But every now and then somebody would get on to the speaking in tongues. And then they would try to convince others that you have to have this, you need to come along. And it would cause problems in the church. The Holy Spirit and the gifts 
should never divide the church. Any gift that we have will never be used to its fullest potential for God unless it is brought under the control of and empowered by the Holy Spirit. There is nothing more tragic than the gift of God which is misused for selfish and unspiritual purposes. So it needs to benefit all of us. Okay, take a little bit of a breather. For right now, we've talked about the Spirit is present in every believer. We're filled for a purpose. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to draw attention to Christ. And there are gifts and fruits involved. One thing that seems to be very important is humility. That if you have a gift or a fruit that you're to be very humble about. Billy Graham wrote one other point that a person who is filled with the Spirit may not even be conscious of it. And that not one biblical character said, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Other people may have said it about it, but they did not claim it for themselves. And that is being very humble. As I have worked in this church and seen others, looked at their examples, I have been inspired by some of you. You probably don't know it. Maybe better not to tell you. <laughs> but I've watched some of you work. You've picked up projects. You've reached out to people to help people. And that is quite inspiring. I've used the example before of Mike Fetchner. You've probably heard it at times, and I may use it every time I speak. I don't know. But he was the Dallas businessman. He was in insurance, and he was doing quite well. He attended church, and then he really started listening, and he got involved with the underprivileged in the Dallas area and started spending his time there trying to educate and help low-income people, youth who were marginal and could be in trouble. And he got really involved in that. And then he got sick. He got the verdict. And they actually gave him a few months to live. The thing was, his family would go to visit him, and they couldn't find him. He wouldn't be in his room. With a, a sentence like that hanging over him, he got out in his wheelchair, and he took his IV bottle and went down the hall to visit the other patients to hear their stories. I think that faced with that sometimes, that we just kind of curl up when bad news comes. And maybe that's all right for a while, but I was thinking of those little bugs that crawl across the basement floor. And kinda, I call them armadillo bugs. And you touch them, and they curl up. That's their first instinct, but if you leave them alone, they uncurl and start on their way again. And maybe it's like that with us. When, when tragedy comes, it stuns us for a while. But you kind of have a choice. You can uncurl and look around again and start thinking, what am I here for? What does God want me to do? What kind of gifts, what kind of fruit of the Spirit can I use? If you want to sit and do nothing, you can. But if you want to come out from under the covers and out of that shell and begin to look around, you will see places where you are needed. And you might ask yourself, well, is that something that the Holy Spirit guides me to? Should I just try it out? What kind of questions and thoughts come to mind? Well, think about the church. 
Who's responsible for the fellowship time after church? Have you ever asked yourself, why doesn't someone go to visit so-and-so who's on the sick list? Can't someone send a get well card to so-and-so? Our town needs this. Our church needs that. How was that decision made about worship? Who got that lay speaker for Sunday? Did they know what they were doing? <laughs> God, where can you use me today? If you have questions and things that come up like that, maybe it's kind of a nudge from the Spirit, something that you might want to look into. Well, as always, Scripture plays a big part in it. Prayer, daily devotions, and mentors, people you can talk to that are there to help you out, that can offer you advice. It all kind of works in together and, and gives us a, a way to go, to try things that we think we might be good at, to try things that we're not really sure that's the right place to be. Well, we're getting near the end now. And here's the scripture that was in the bulletin today, Ephesians 1.13. And now you have heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. So consider your role in the spreading of the gospel of Christ. You have the Spirit. You have gifts to use for the kingdom of God, people to reach with the message and with love. Every day, take a moment to realize that it's a new day. A new opportunity is there for me and for you. Let's try not to be lazy about it. Let's do what we can, even if it's just small things, to help someone out. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for Scripture and for your Word, for the Holy Spirit, and for the way that you work in this world. Help us to look for that and to see it and to be accomplices it can help you and help each other. Amen. At this time, let us worship with our tithes and offerings.
thank you for your goodness to us and return these gifts to be used by you. Amen. Uh, time for joys and concerns. Any joys this week that need to be mentioned? I just wanted to report that yesterday we had the blessing of my sister being able to come over to the house for a cookout. Um, she was there for approximately five hours and got to talk with us and enjoy the cookout food and just had a good time. Despite the terrific heat, it was hot in our house. Any other joys? Paul? Yeah, I put a little blurb on Facebook the other day. Uh, Pastor Chris's brother were in Utah, and they celebrated their 20th anniversary of their, I believe it was their graduation from seminary, and they were recognized out there in the General Assembly. Tuesday we celebrate Hannah's 16th birthday. Yes, Ron. Wow, so Ron's sister was 80? And Hannah was 16. How do you like that? 180 and 116. Whoa. How about prayer concerns? Days ago, so prayers for her, please. Okay, and Hannah is over at Sweetbriar, right? Okay. Um, Dave, all, Dave Ryan also is at Sweetbriar and he has COVID, so prayers for him and Joyce. And I had a celebration. I thought you were too far away. I thought I'll wait until next week. But um, my friend Lynn Pretty, who I used to teach with, uh, we've been praying for her for several months, and she had a second bout of uh, breast cancer. She just finished her treatments. She's all good. Uh, Caroline, I think. Well. Was it three and a half months? I stood up, and um, it was true. I, you know, I had this sarcoma all my life, and I was going to pick to uh, whatever. Andy, Andy. <laughs> my mind saw it better. Uh, but I, I, uh, three and a half months, and we gone down there. And I do want to tell you that I never did hurt it, didn't hurt at all. And uh, y'all prayed for me, and all of stuff, and things. I mean, y'all have treated me so well. And when he was talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, this church is just full of the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, I was certainly a recipient of all that, and I, I thank you so much. But now, this isn't the week, but it's leading up to the week. We're leaving on Wednesday, and we're going down here to have all kinds of tests. And then the next week, the 16th, is the surgery. We've been waiting for the surgery all this time. So just pray on the 16th, please, that they get every day on one of those cancer cells. And, and you know, that's what, that's what it's all about. So thank you so much.
All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your constant presence with each one of us through whatever times we're going through. Good times, bad times, you are there. Sometimes when it's good, we tend to forget, but we need to, to try to remember that you're there too. And when it's good for us, maybe there's someone else that we can help out or speak to that is not having such a good time. When it's bad, help us to rely on you and to stay calm and to rest assured that you will be with us no matter what happens. We thank you for this church. We ask for your special presence and watching over those who have been mentioned. Please be with Hannah and Dave. Help them at Sweetbriar. Both of them are having some health issues. Please comfort them and help them to recover. We thank you for the report on Lynn and ask that you continue to be with her and help her in healing. And we ask for prayers again for Randy and Caroline as they wait for the trip back to Houston. Please help them to be confident and trusting in you no matter what the outcome but we pray for a good outcome for Caroline. We ask for prayers for those we are thinking of and maybe didn't mention. We ask for continued prayers for this congregation and for all the families around this neighborhood. We pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing our last hymn, Peace Like a River. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be with each of us this week and guide us in all that we say and do. Amen. Amen.